of silicon with a glass disc on it. And in my lab, there's a layer of fluid resting on that disc. It's about as light as a human hair, which means it's mind-bogglingly big. I've been trying to make one thing, and today it's this thing, be in two places at the same time. It's called the quantum superposition, and it seems to be some mathematical concept. Einstein thought it was just that. But today, we know it's real. Our technological future depends on qubits, tiny switches that can be on and off at the same time. Today, we use electron microscopes that can only work because the electrons inside it are in a superposition. The light in this room consists of tiny particles that can be photons that can be in multiple places. But all of those things, photons, qubits, electrons, I can't see them anyway. So if someone tells me that they are in two places at the same time, sure. I think it's time to pull these abstract ideas from the ether and make them into something that can be put into school books next to Newton's apple. Because they're equally real, and they are children's children's future, they will make an equal part of their daily lives. What if we could make a whole whole visible thing be in a quantum superposition? We could use one of those invisible particles, like a photon, but let it interact with something that is visible and big. For example, this apple. If the photon is over here, it can hit the apple, and it falls. But if the photon is somewhere over there, the apple never fell, and it stays here. So if the photon is over there and over here simultaneously, the apple is here and here simultaneously. And this scheme was used to put the first visible object in the superposition this decade. And we're trying to push that limit further to bigger things like this fluid. So we can answer questions like, what is too big? Is it an apple? Is it a human? And why? The problem is that light particles or photons don't have a lot of push. You don't feel being pushed in your seat by the photons coming from the ceiling. So the major technical challenge for everyone at Denver is to increase the efficiency with which those tiny photons can move big objects. And we can do that because the object that we use is a fluid. So it's ultra-sensitive and compliant to the tiniest forces, even those of light. We've demonstrated already that photons that we send into the disk can move the fluid like a marionette, make it move like a drum head, and form select landscapes. And so instead of showing you some fancy microscopy picture of this device, I suggest that you come up to me at lunch and then you can take a look with your own eyes.